I was out on the Isles of Scilly with him for five weeks, uh, essentially babysitting him and building him a pontoon so he had somewhere to rest. I hear that he's still in Iceland this morning. He's resting up. He's had a long journey to get there. He will need to get his strength back on in order for him to move on to Greenland and hopefully Svalbard. So he's doing really, really well. He's a success story that shows just how resilient these marine mammals are. And we need but to you give said him you built as... a pontoon for him there. Do you want to explain why? Because he seemed to be causing havoc wherever he went. Yeah, so he was um, he was turning over boats because he's really inexperienced. He's only a four-year-old um, walrus. So um, in order to reduce the damage that he was causing to people's property, which was causing trickiness in terms of their relationship with him, we built him a pontoon, which was very successful. He chose that to rest on because it's a little bit more like an ice cap to haul out onto, which then meant that he had a bit more routine, was enabled to gain the weight that he needed in order to move on to where he is now and he's heading north he's heading in the right direction which is great for us to hear what with all these marine mammals it's very important we give them space to do that so um, what does what does a walrus like him weigh how much does he weigh about so he'd be about 800 kilos so a bit different from the seal pups that we're dealing with in our hospital who are around <laughs> 20 to 30. Um, he's a big boy he's around half the weight that he will eventually be um, so he is still a young walrus but uh, but he's you know, he's lost a lot of weight, I think, on that trip, on that 900 mile trip to Iceland, but he will now rest, he will now feed, and it's ve we're very hopeful that he will make it home now, because... Well, we know he's, he's been, he's travelled 4,000 kilometres so far, from Ireland to Wales, to Devon, to France, um, as you say, Iceland there, but I know he's been dropping off at various points along the way. And yeah, here he is, and we're going to be, hopefully, here, here he, is. he is. He's even made it to GB <laughs> News Studios. Um, I thought he was producing the programme today, but no, he's just relaxing there no, on no. our very own pontoon there, it's which a, is our sofa. He's better at the auto queue than I am, so well done, Molly. There you go. <laughs> I just... <laughs> so what else are you doing there at the hospital, then? How many pups do you have coming through? So seal pups that we rescue in Cornwall, we're one of the busiest call-out locations in the UK. Last season, we cared for 139 seal pups. So that's a really large number of pups. And they can get into distress for all sorts of reasons. Partly climate change. So much like Wally, they've got those challenges of storms, of, you know, of actually being displaced from, from their locations. People disturbance. So human disturbance is a big issue for us. So we're encouraging people, if they see a seal pup with its mum, or even if they see it on its own, to call us and we can monitor it. So in case the mum's coming back to feed it, worst case scenario is somebody goes and picks up the seal pup and actually they didn't need to do that. The pup was literally just having a rest and mum was on her way back. So we have those sorts of things. We have fishing line entanglement is an issue for them. They have various injuries. We're seeing much more storm weather just when they're really small, which is creating issues around them not feeding well and being malnu having malnutrition. So a hospital has been very much needed in Cornwall for a long time. And, and then Lizzie, just a final question. People have been asking, how do we know that was definitely Wally in all of the shots? Was it different, different walruses or was it Wally? How did you keep check of him? So one of the ways that we identify these marine mammals and seals, we do the same thing as we look at their, their markings. Now, this particular walrus who's been named Wally um, has got two very distinctive marks on his four flippers which we've used to photo identify him. He's also got other markings on his body that are very, that, that are able to be matched. So we match photographs. Uh, you can see on this picture that you've just brought up, he's got a very distinctive scar across the front of his, um, what's that, left front flipper. And he's also got a very similar one on the right. So we definitely know that it's him. And then we definitely know that the other walrus that's around in Germany at the moment is a female. So um, yeah, so that's definitely our big brown fella.